dear mike members of the uh, organizing committee in the headquarters distinguished audience it's a matter of great pride and privilege for me to stand amidst you all and speak on a very dynamic topic which interfaces a marine surveyor's life his appointment as a superintendent for a new build or an ongoing conversion project the event becomes all the more important for me because of the iconic uh, location it's a alma mater for every marine surveying personality and i'm very happy to be here amongst you all a question while we were preparing this uh, presentation it was uh, our research team which did lot of work and i must thank them for having all put in all the efforts one of the questions that did come up was why is a marine surveyor required or preferred over a dedicated project manager my answer to that is a dedicated project manager is any day better than a marine surveyor who will be doing the dual task of being a marine superintendent at that particular stage nevertheless when a surveyor with all his background and his knowledge wears the hat of a new build supervisor there are certain onuses certain additionals which come on to him as a non negotiable requirement so today what i am trying to do is not delve into the details of marine surveyor's ability or the requirement of a new build supervision but my goal today would be to find that interface wherein a marine surveyor does act as a new build supervisor so without much ado i will get into the details of my topic because i do understand we all do understand that any new build supervision calls in for a lot of meticulous planning so if the why is clear the how finds its own way so let's go through the next sequence of slides that i have for you now who are the parties involved in the new build supervision we can see it's the owners the ship designers naval architects shipyards approval authorities which could be classification societies flag state administration port state requirements underwriters subcontractors and equipment suppliers so the plethora of the entire industry amalgamates themselves to deliver a product and the supervisor superintendent's responsibility is to see that the synergy is perfect in this amalgamation because an act of omission in a new build supervision can be very very expensive to correct an job which should have been done or omitted can cost lot of time effort and money so it's a non negotiable thing that this tangible coordination has to be done correctly who appoints a marine super uh, superintendent marine surveyor to act as a superintendent it could be the ship owner it could be the underwriters at times or it could be the ship builders also so whichever hat the surveyor dons he gets on to it with a different perspective and with the uh, uh, ultimate knowledge of the scope of his appointment in the event he is acting on behalf of a ship owner he has got his responsibility to be his eyes and ears on all matters besides looking at the other factors which would be at the build yards suitability the safety factors involved in that the periodic valuation of the project whether it is at the prim primary stage intermediate stage or at towards the culmination stages also monitor the escalation of costs at all stages because ultimately it is the almighty dollar which drives every uh, project forward and also ensure that the damage and accident insurance incidences are not only minimized but negated totally and of course coordinate with the other parties who would be involved in the warranty or in the uh, various other factors which will be from the inception to the delivery stages now in the event he is appointed on behalf of say the underwriters or the ship builders his responsibilities by and large are the same just that he does not don the hat of a owner's representative but in this case he is representing his underwriter or his or the ship builder who has appointed him for that particular job 
Now, what would be the qualities, basic qualities that a marine surveyor would need to have when he is getting on to this role of a new build supervisor? He could either be, his background could be different. He could either be a master mariner, he could be a marine engineer, he could be a sea, any seafarer, naval architect or a mechanical or electrical engineer. By and large, we have seen quite a few uh, cases in our own experience where it is not just one expertise that is adequate. You need a combination of naval architects, you need a combination of uh, uh, mechanical engineers and you need co combination of operational experts to put this thing together. A recent case where we were involved in, it was mandatory on the project contract that a mechanical should, engineer should be the head of the team. Regardless of who else complements the project, he has to be there. So we need to identify where exactly it all comes from. He should also have a sufficient knowledge of the operational requirements, procedures, shipbuilding practices, abreast with the latest conventions, aware of regulations and also preferably or mandatorily he should have had done pro some project management course because there are basic things which normally in our course of life, uh, work, working life we do not uh, comprehend. But if we want to do a new build supervision, it is mandatory that at least the team leader or one of the key members of the team has done the project management course so that he understands the process from A to Z. Of course, he should have the suitable skills to identify uh, a mechanical engineering. He, engineer does do machine drawing in his university days. But over a period of time, by the time he is at sea and comes back, he, if he gets onto a project, there are times he might not be abreast with the latest uh, uh, ma uh, machine drawing reading practices. So it is important that he develops those skills before he takes on the role of being a new build supervisor. Of course, he should have the skill to con have a leadership quality should be there wherein he should be able to coordinate, control and finally oversee the delivery of the project. Now, what are the salient features of a new build project? It, whether it's any project, whether small or big, for that matter, even doing a survey or making a survey report or let's say even going out on a date is a project by itself. Unless planned and executed correctly, anything can go wrong. So the success of the project lies in the devil itself, in the meticulous planning. That is the whole uh, mantra for a successful project. So clear vision of the project, we cannot, like I have rightly said here, a doctor cannot offer a, offer a solution unless he knows the problem. A site supervisor cannot give out solutions unless he knows what exactly is the core activity, core requirement of the entire project. In-depth study is mandatory. Suitability of the consultant's qualification, we just went about it, it is very necessary. Conceptualization, it is important to put the whole project into a concept, form a clear, well-defined concept where you envisage it from the point number 1 to the point number x to z, wherein we unfold, the whole thing unfolds in our minds and on the paper before we go in for actual execution. Review of the concept and agreement of all concerned, all the parties who are involved in it have to have a, it has to have a series of meetings, preliminary and intermediate, wherein each of these points are discussed at every stage and concurred upon. Drafting out a project plan, which is the most important thing, wherein he got to plan it out in consultation with each of the other members who are part of the project. And then, allocation of the budget, all important task of allocating a budget because any project does not finish in time for various reasons. Normally it should, but there are tangible reasons why it could be external forces. So those forces have to be calculated much in advance and a reserve. A factual budget and a reserve are two different things. A reserve is something which can be called upon, but as far as possible, a factual budget is very, very important for the project to succeed. Obtain the approvals of the drawings from all parties, whether it is, of course, from the classification societies and also from the flag authorities. 
and if the charters are involved, if the, if the build is, new build is in requirement for a projectable charter, the charter should be able to give adequate input well in time as to what are his preconditions and that has to be met when you make the project plan. Selection of the shipyard, cheapest is not always the best and the best is not always the most suitable ones. The project that we are involved in might not require very high end uh, uh, deliverables. So, a location of the yard is very, very important with respect to the accessibility and supply of part, parts. So, cheapest sometimes is definitely not right, but many a time big yards are too busy to give you adequate info, uh, attention to your project. So, our project gets suff just suffer if the project is, uh, the yards are too big and they are not having adequate time and resources to allocate to your project. And of course, the timeline has to be project uh, very well identified and the storage. One of the projects we did in Qatar, I would not be able to name it. The main equipments were delivered very, very early, very, very early and for various reasons, the project did not start up and uh, in the right time. So, most of the equipments had to be re-preserved and that costed a lot of money. They were not, the, the facilities for storing these equipments were not ready and the delivery was done very fast. So, in such cases, the planning, the project manager does, we called, we were called in at a much later stage and these were the glaring anomalies that we had noticed at that particular time. So, it is very important to plan out the procurement and the delivery of these equipments in time, in sync with the ongoing project. Continuous monitoring and project coordination, no words are less to highlight the importance of this. Whether it be in terms of a daily meeting, documenting the daily meetings, monthly meetings or periodic meetings. And of course, taking part in the performance trials, verifying it against the contract specifications deliverable sometimes can vary as against the requirement, initial requirement. The client has paid for something, he should get what he has paid for. So, that is very, very important, a very vital part when we reach the stage of performance trials. And delivery of the vessel, very much in time and make sure we have, as a project manager, we have to make sure that every item is documented because these can be called upon at a later date. In recent case we did, it was a small project, but we were not having adequate information to make a docking plan because the documents which were made in the yard were not very clear. There were no clear cut documents available. So, this is one of the learning lessons we have had. Everything that is done has to be documented to the last word. Now, as we see a role of a new build supervisor, whether it is from the conception stage or to the completion stage calls in for a lot of stages, whether it be planning, coordination, execution and delivery. Now, when we talk about planning, I will run through the points very briefly. We got to identify the objectives, utility of the project, the functions, quality, time and costing which will be involved from the very beginning when we are planning out the project. Coordination non-negotiable fact between all the parties involved like in this case sh owners, shipyards and the suppliers and other contractors. Uh, effective coordination becomes very, very important. Execution like I mentioned earlier, site inspections, weekly meetings, progress reporting, verifying milestones, testing and communication, com commissioning of the equipments. Extremely vital as we approach the stage of the delivery, where the C trials have to be done, closure of all the punch line, punch list items, class and surveyed and handing over of the ship to the owner along with the documentation very correctly done. All these factors call for extraordinary control. The project manager has to be in control at all times. It is non-negotiable. It is as a service provider, it is important for us to have a back, backup even for the superintendent. In case for some reason he is not available for that period of time during the project, he has to be supported 
admirably so that there is no lack in coordination between the various factors. So, a control is of utmost importance of resources, design inputs, material selection and construction procedures. How do all these things complement a project is something I will show you in my next slide. Look at it carefully, in particular the last one which ends with a bang. These are not practical experiences of ours, we have taken it from various sources. A typical launching. All the years of hard work, this is the moment of reckoning. It's all fine, it's nice to take photographs. <coughs> Perfect. Everything goes well. Till this happens. This is one of those things which went wrong. Perhaps they didn't appoint a project manager, a good one. Now, what are the challenges faced by the project manager or the superintendent? There are quite a few in an and they were to avoid what just happened. There are quite a few things which we come across and there are various challenges. I have tried to identify some of them. Possible resistance from shipyards. Okay, I put this point because one of our project manager who is part of our team now was working for a very premium uh, shipbuilding yard. So once we were working on this uh, presentation, I asked him, now that you are here, you are on the other side of the fence, but whilst you were there, what was your first reaction to a owner superintendent. What he said, I can't speak here, there are ladies. In a sense, what he meant was, he is a pain. We don't want to see the owner superintendent anywhere near our, in our yard, simply because he keeps nitpicking and he keeps delaying the project. But ultimately, he also said that it's because of that, the project went out successfully. So he may not be the most liked person, but he is the most required person there. He has to do his job. So, these are one of the resistance comes from the shipyards as well. They do not like an owner superintendent or a supervisor keep on, who is all the time on the dot. Other challenge could be not having a clear mandate from the owners. The goal post keeps changing, especially if people are aware in the Middle East, it keeps changing. I know one particular case, a massive project. The owner just walked in and he says, I don't want this because he did not like the reflection of his yacht in the water. That was not to his liking. So he just shelved the project. It happens. It happens. So a clear mandate is not there. He, 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 he didn't tell initially what is the reflection that he wants to look like. He wants to see. He just wanted a yacht. He got it. But the reflection was not good. So perhaps next time we should look at the reflection also. Discuss with him what is the reflection that you want to see. So these are some of the challenges where a, a project manager can get caught. Ambiguous contract and build specification, illogical demands, being introduced in the project midways. Yes, this is a major problem. Sometimes they think they will do it right all by themselves. They go down the track and then they realize maybe we chewed more than what we can, uh, we bit more than what we could chew. So then they call in a project manager. Perhaps. That is not too late, but at times a bit late. So this is one of the challenges that a project manager does uh, come across. Then unforeseen limitations due to external factors, which is cash crunch, natural calamities, unavoidable, but it happens sometimes, many a times. So I'll go to the next segment and run through the stages very, very quickly. We have spoken about it. 
but there are some things I would like to come back on. Contract specification and review, very important. Design review, very important. Proposal for design improvement at any stage, it has to be done. It has to be done in a very streamlined manner. It can't be done in an arbitrary manner. Site supervision, coordination between the owners, vendors, non-negotiable. Factory acceptance test, yes, very much required. Of the equipment before they are supplied on the site. Each equipment that is supplied on site has to have an acceptance test done prior delivery. So it becomes a responsibility of the project manager to ensure that this has been done and he has got sufficient documents to prove that this has been done and verified. Safety review on the vessel, periodic. Periodic can be daily to six monthly to annual. Commissioning and operational trials, yes. Attending dock trials, attending sea trials. I'll come back to that later on. Final handover of the documentation like I mentioned earlier. Preparing punch list, I don't mean a fisty punch, but what it means is in uh, terms of uh, shipyard language, the ones who have been involved, it is indeed a list where each party towards the end of the contract has got some other thing that they have to point out in an anomaly or something which they want to point out and they punch out. Ultimately, the one who comes out bruised is the project manager like in there. So that role is not very, very uh, rosy. You do get hit sometimes. So summarily, initial discussions about the contract requirement, projects requirements has to be sorted out very clearly. Design and specifications have to be meticulously done, meticulously to the last word to be done and verified and got approved from the relevant authorities. Execution, which is totally the project manager's ball game. He has to see that it is executed very well in tandem with all parties concerned. So what are the benefits that we have of having a good project manager and a good site supervision? We can say it can reduce ambiguity. Ambiguity can be like you see in this caricature here. He says, I want a shallow draft vessel to operate in waters that deep. Illogical demands. Very, very illogical. Then. Other benefit is overall project costs are uh, reduced if you monitor it very correctly and meticulously. Value engineering and reduction in time. Completion is done in due time. Centralized communication, one point of contact, no confusions, no multiple emails going out, no numerous people giving their suggestions. Or even they, if they do it, it is all centralized from one project manager's desk. It enhances the quality of the uh, overall project and it monitors the plan schedule against actual progress, which is very important. Like I said, actual budget and uh, reserve. Same way, the schedule will also be actual against a tentative budget. So what we see here is a good ship design plus good contract strategy gives you optimization of quality, time, and cost, period. Yeah. On the other hand, a good ship design with poor contract strategy can result in unnecessary compromises delays and costs. This is where I'm trying to stem, my entire project uh, presentation stems from, that an effective project manager can make a lot of difference, will make a lot of difference to the success of the project. So, like I said, benefits, uh, it avoids rework and delays, avoids ambiguity. He acts as the effective eyes and ears of the owner or the shipbuilder or the underwriter, whoever, whoever has appointed him. He ensures sh good shipbuilding practices are implemented. The project manager enhances decision making capability at all stages and he expedites the construction process. In case he is appointed by the ship, on, uh, ship uh, underwriters or by the shipbuilder, there are various things that he has to go through. I will run through it. I know the time is running out. The risks that are involved in the project management uh, phases in the shipyards. He has to ensure that the quality of the construction and the production process is very good. We were involved in the major case here where the weldings were being meticulously looked at by the ABS certifying societies and they were very upset with the project engineer who, was hap who happened to be asked and we had to 
do a lot of homework to satisfy the classification society that yes, this is how it will be done. So it's very important, quality control is utmost importance. Then management of various subcontractors, then safety aspects, non-negotiable. We are all very sane people in an industry which is extremely mature. Safety comes first. Safety of men and material comes first over anything else. So safety implementation is extremely important. Monitoring of gases is a part of the safety. If you walk through the shipyard where new builds are going on, there's a battery of bottles a small mistake can result in a catastrophe. Okay, monitoring of the trials, risks. We cannot eliminate them, but unarguably, we can definitely reduce them and mitigate them. That is the sole responsibility of a project manager. A quick run through of quick st case studies that we have done wherein you have a drawings from a 2D to 3D to actual rendering. So I'll run through the slides very quickly. This is how we had planned it initially. This is how it started. It's a very small case, not a big boat. It's a super dhau nevertheless. This is the final outcome. These are some of the things we have done on under the project where you do the rendering of the drawings of the machinery spaces and get it discussed at the right quarters. This is one of our pet projects. We did one of the biggest uh, accommodation barge built indigenously in the UAE. We were involved from that stage to this stage. For obvious reasons, the names are smudged, but I'm sure Zareer and uh, Sujit will know which vessel this is. This is a time-lapse video. I just put it to add some value to the project uh, presentation. This is how it looks like. It is not made by us, it is borrowed from the website. encapsulated within a few seconds, but you can imagine amount of uh, planning and execution that goes in doing all this. Those of you who are wondering who is this superimposed person, that's me. Our team put it there. I wasn't in favor of it, but then they said, no, let it go. That's all I have to say. Thank you.